So now we have our H2 ready. You can see we have the we have the entire console here. But if you see, we don't have the tables which we want. So it got some tables, but not something which we want. So if you expand this, nothing is there for us. What table I'm talking about? If you remember the theory, we have talked about the table because we have a class called product and I want a table which will have this data. So the table name should be product. Uh, the column should be the variables of the product and the data will be of course rows. So how do I get that? How do we create this table? And for this, we have to do some changes in the code. The first thing you will do is, we'll make the changes in the, uh, which basically will create a repository layer. See, so service is not responsible to work with data. It is responsibility of the repository. So what I will do is I will create another package here where you will have all the repositories. So I will just right click here and say new uh, package and we'll call this as repository. Or you can also say repo, that works. Now in this package, you will have all your classes interfaces for the repository. Now the question arises: what kind of file we are going to create? Is it a class or the interface? See, logically it should be class, right? Because we have to write a lot of code uh, to work with database for filing the query and having different methods for different actions. But what if I say we can do that with the help of interface? And you'll be saying, okay, we have talked about that in the, inter in the theory. Uh, Spring Data JPA will help you in that uh, definitions. And yes, so what you can do is uh, you can simply create the interface here. I will say class, but we'll select interface here. And we'll name this as product repo. Okay, now simple interface, nothing fancy. Now in this interface, we are going to define the methods. Oh, we can't define methods in the interface. We can using default, but we have this interface and we can declare methods. But ultimately, it has to be defined somewhere. But JPA will take care of it or Spring Data JPA will take care of it. We don't have to worry about those definitions. But what should be the method names? Let's say I'm not even mentioning the method names. Let's keep it blank. But one thing I will do, I will just say at repository here. Remember when we talked about uh, controller, we have on top of that, we have at controller. On service, we have at service. Repository layer will have at repository. It gives some extra features to it. But since I want Spring Data JPA to take care of everything, what I will do is I will extend a class called JPA repository in which you will mention the primary key. So basically you have to mention two things. Uh, first, the class name which we are working with and second, the primary key type, which is the integer. So just these two things and our job is done. Okay, what are the methods? Let's skip it. Let's say we, if you don't enter it, let's see what happens. Now that's one thing we have done with the repository. Next, in the service, I'm going to use this repository. So I will say come back here and we got the product repo. Let's create the repo as a reference variable and let's say auto wire. So that will get this object. First of all, we don't have a class, right? So Spring is responsible to create the object of this class or this interface. So basically someone has to create the class of it and then Spring will create the object of it. And who's that someone who will create a class for it? It is your or Spring Data JP. I'll go back here. And now since I don't want this, I will just comment this part. We don't, we, we don't need those things. And when you say get products, who is responsible to give you the products? Let's see. I will say repo dot. The moment I say dot, can you see that we have so many methods? Now, mind you, we are using that repo variable, which is the type of uh, product repo. And in this interface, we don't have any method. Since still, when you say dot, it is giving you a lot of options. Question arise from where you're getting all, all these methods. If you go back to repo, we are extending with JPA repository. Now this particular interface has all the methods which are which we are getting there, right? Uh, if not in this, if you see we have also, it also extends least uh, CRUD repository. This has some more methods. Uh, if you go to CRUD repository, this has some more methods. If you go to repository, this has nothing, but yeah. But you got the point, right? So we, we are getting all those methods because of this JPA repository, which you have mentioned here. So let's go back here and let's see which method will help us. So find all uh, looks like a method which will give the list of products and that's what we want, if you can see. I will say find all, okay? Next, uh, we need to replace this. And as I mentioned before, right? We don't need to write this all this lengthy code once we start using JPA. Uh, we want a product based on a ID. So I will say repo dot find uh, all, okay, not all, I want one. So I will say find by ID and pass the ID here. But it is giving you an error. It is, it, it returns an optional. 
So I will say all else return me a blank object that works for me. Next, we have to add a product. So of course we don't have that now. So again, I will use the repo to add the product. Now, which method we are going to use? So if you can see, if you scroll down, some method should be there, which looks good. Yeah, save looks good, right? So I will use save and pass the object. No errors, we're happy. Update, lengthy code, right? Let's remove everything. Repo dot. Now the thing is, we don't have any method called update. If you see, if I click on, if you type I update, there's nothing. The only method you can use is save for both, for saving as well as updating, we use save. So what this will do is it will check if the data is there. If the data is there, it will update. If it is not there, it will create. As simple as that. Delete, no lengthy code. Just remove this. And we can say repo dot delete, delete by ID because we have to pass an ID. So I'll say prod ID and our job is done. It's so simple, right? Look at the code here in the service. We have, we don't have any hard-coded values. Everything is coming from the database. Looks good. Okay, uh, is it done yet? Let's try to run this and let's see what errors you get. Run this and, okay, what do you think? We will get the error or not? Oh, we got the error. Let's see what the error is. It says, not a managed type. Which one? Product, is it? If you go back to the product, this is a component, but still it says not managed. Why? Because if you see, the error is because of the Hibernate. See, uh, under, under the hood, it is implemented with the help of Hibernate, it, it follows the JPA standards. So if you want to have a class of which you want to create a table, we have to use one more annotation called entity. Okay, so this is the annotation we have to use. Now it should be happy with it, oh, but I think we'll get another error. Let's see, and we got it. This time it says, okay, not the same error. You can see it says entity product, looks good, has no identifier, oh, that's weird. See, the problem is every table need to have a primary key. In this case, we know it should be product ID, but we have not specified it. So you have to mention this as ID. So you have to mention, hey, this is a primary key. Okay, so prod is a primary key, prod ID. Let's rerun this. I hope there's no problem. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, no problem. If you scroll here, Tomcat started. To test it, I will just refresh this and say connect once again. Okay, but if this time if you see, we got a product table. This is what we want, right? Let's run the query. So I will say select uh, star from product. And as of now, it is empty. We want to add some data. How will we do that? Of course, we can run the insert query here, or we can go back to our postman. Remember postman? Yeah, it's here. So first of all, let's get all the products and let's see if what we get. So we got empty because we don't have any products and table it is empty. Let's add some data. So I will say post. Uh, we do have a body here, which is this. I will say, I will start with 101 now. Send, okay, it says okay. There should be one product now. How do we test it? Let's go back to console, run. Hey, it's working. We got database connectivity. It is getting stored in database. Let's store one more. I will say two. This time I will store a, a water bottle. And let's say 200. Click on send. It works. Let's try to fetch all the data. And this data is coming from database, as you can see. Let's also verify the in database. And it's working. But hold on. We have not implemented any of these methods. Where is the query? How you're getting all these queries? If you can see, this is empty and we have not even created a class. And that's the magic of Spring Data JPA, uh, which is creating a class for you behind the scene. But maybe you want to see the queries here. We are getting the products, but what queries it is firing behind the scene? If you want to know that, you can add one more property in the application properties. So we can say Spring dot data source dot show SQL equal to true. I hope this is a property name if I'm not wrong. Let's relaunch it. The problem is every time you relaunch, you will lose the data because you're using in memory database. Let's see, I will say get, we have not got any data and we have not even got the query. Maybe the property name is different. Is it spring dot JPA dot show SQL? Okay, yeah, it is show SQL. If you can see, uh, it is actually creating a table for us, right? So this is the query I'm talking about. So for every query now, so even if you say, uh, let's say if you want to say get all the products and see the query here, it says select query. What if you want to add a product? So click on send, we have added the product and look at the query, it is insert query. 
So that's how basically it is working behind the scene. We can see the query as well. What if you want to change the username password of your H2? We can do that. So I will say spring dot data source dot username. And let's say the username is Naveen and spring for the passwords. I will say spring dot data source dot password. I will say the password is Telisco. Now after making those changes, just restart just to secure your H2 console. Okay, it started. And if I want to access the H2 console now, if I use a default username password, if I click on test connection, it failed. So we have to use Naveen and Telisco as a password, connect, it worked. So that's how basically we can change the username and password and we can do all the setup for H2. So I hope this makes sense. Uh, there are certain more things in, H2, in the Spring Data JPA. Maybe if you want to customize these methods, uh, we got default methods, but what if you want to have some customized methods? Uh, let's try to achieve that once we do the project itself. You know, we can do those changes. So yeah, that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, Spring Data JPA. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.